So when we're learning the score, um, I make what I call a cheat sheet. And there are many ways to do this, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to the way that I do it and I teach it. Um, and the purpose of the cheat sheet is to get you through rehearsal and to commit a score to memory in the most simple way. Um, I don't recommend only having a cheat sheet in front of you in rehearsal at all. You always need to have your music and, um, you know, in between reps or um, instructions, definitely be looking at your at your score, especially if it's new, to try to learn these entrances um, and to try to learn, you know, who has the melody. And a lot of this is just as you go, um, things that you have to do. So. Again, the cheat sheet is not at all a substitute for having your score with you, um, but hopefully it's a tool to help commit this to memory. So with that, let me show you what I'm working with. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna devote a column to my rehearsal markings. So right here, um, you see this is top to A. I'm gonna have a second column for my meter and the number of them, and then a third column for tempo. And uh, if you would really want to, you can create another column for notes, um, or as you go, you can jot down, you know, okay, at letter B, the trumpets come in. Um, these are things that you can have just to, the idea is just to have it so you can look down in case you forget what's coming and look back up without having a stand right in your face with the entire score of music and flipping through and all that mess. This is supposed to be simple. Um, so if this is something that stresses you out, either practice with it or, um, Definitely you can choose to forego it. Um, I have other um, things I'm going to talk about uh, as to how to memorize um, scores coming. So just a minute on that. So um, we're back here. We're at top to A. We're at our meter. And this is an opener that I just totally made up. Um, so it can apply to virtually anything. Um, so what I've got here is in parentheses, I have the meter, 4-4. Four, four, and I'm pretending that there are four bars of 4-4. Four, four to start this piece off, and it is at tempo of 110. So with that, I would say I have four bars of 4-4, four, four, and I put it in parentheses just so I know what meter I'm in. I have a single bar of 2-4, and then another four bars of 4-4 four, four that gets us to letter A. So if you're rehearsing top to A, you could just glance down at this, kind of say it back to yourself, and roll with the exercise. Um, or if you're continuing down, this is right here in case you need to glance down and glance right back up. You don't have to worry about keeping up with page flips. Um, so just to kind of continue translating my work, A to B would be 8 bars of 4-4. Four, four. B to C we're saying is another 8. And then we have this pretend immediate tempo change to 80 beats a minute um, at letter C. And to get from C to D, we're saying there are 12 bars of 3-4. And so this can work. I like to group it out and leave a little space between each letter so I can find it easily visually. Um, it's right there in front of me. Again, um, as you saw, that is a very, very dry, basic, basic um, boiling down of the score. It's not musical at all. It's strictly so that we can rehearse the band or the drum corps really well so that they're not waiting on us to, you know, freak out and have our moment, um, you know, of what of what's coming next in the music. So, so cheat sheets work really well, um, handwritten, especially if you just get the score right on the moment, on the spot, immediately start marking your score and go to a blank piece of paper and write down your cheat sheet. Um, if you have a little more time, definitely um, I take the opportunity to type my cheat sheets up and put them in a page protector and I put them at the front of the tab in my binder. So it would be, you know, the tab for the opener, the cheat sheet for the opener, and then the opener score. That way in case we're rehearsing it and they want to run a big chunk so I don't have to flip through um, the music, I just have my cheat sheet right there. But if we're rehearsing that piece for a long time, what I do is I set my binder on the stand or on the ground, I'll pull out my cheat sheet, close my binder back, open up to, you know, where we are in the music so I have the actual music on my stand with me and then I have my cheat sheet tucked to the side or maybe tucked right behind in case they call for a chunk that I'm not totally comfortable with yet. So that's a really good strategy that way you're being musically engaged with the score and you're actively learning it during rehearsal um, but you also kind of have that security blanket of the cheat sheet tucked right there for you. So if you've got a little bit more time to learn your music, say your band director hands it to you in the morning and they say this is what we're teaching this afternoon, um, I would definitely take the opportunity to write it down you know, on a full page to go in your binder. But um, another really great thing to do and to kind of test your memory of the score too 
is to find a whiteboard. Um, so go to the whiteboard and I, I make just a, a big blown up version of that cheat sheet. I'll write down the rehearsal markings or drill. Um, that's another thing that I didn't mention. If you're responsible for having the drill sets memorized, then definitely add, a, add, add another column in there for you know what drill numbers line up with the rehearsal markings if they're not the same. But regardless, um, what, I, what I do is I go find a dry erase board and I just rinse and repeat. I will write down, you know, as much as I can remember and then obviously go back and check it with my score or with my, you know, paper cheat sheet just to see how I'm doing. And that seems really tedious. It's kind of like in the cartoons where, you know, they have to write a thousand times, I will not misbehave, I will not misbehave. Um, it works. <laughs> It's very tedious, but that, that's a, a surefire way to have the score committed to memory is if you can memorize that. And once you have the basic structure and all the numbers in your head, then it's easy as you go to kind of talk yourself through it, like top to A, okay, woodwinds are in here with the front ensemble. You know, letter B, okay, trumpets come in here with the baritones. Uh, you know, and you can kind of work yourself through that process like that, and that way you're really thinking on um, lots of different levels. Um, and hopefully you guys aren't um, overwhelmed by this. Being responsible for knowing an entire score of music is is really challenging, but hopefully between um, you know writing your paper cheat sheet and writing on the whiteboard, um, or I mean if you, if you're just at home, you know just just taking out a spare piece of paper and going through the same process. Um, I definitely have scraps of paper everywhere when I'm first learning a score because I'm you know I'll be in class and I'm, I'm like okay I need, I need to make sure that I really got this down and kind of in a in a minute when you're not totally focused on the score it's, it's good to kind of test where you're at. So. Um, a final trick for memorizing a score that I have is kind of along the same vein of all of this is to um, get jumbo index cards or a dot book and um, keep up with where they're at in the drill, write down the measures you're at and the meters. Um, your dot book, even though you might not have, you know, pages of drill, you definitely have lots of things that you can know. Um, something that is definitely upper level is to have kind of little notes about maybe where your center snare is or, you know, where tricky spots for timing are on the field if if that's one of your responsibilities. There are lots of ways where you can be really proactive and really observant in the drill learning process to make your life easier and just to make your knowledge of the show more holistic. So again, jumbo note cards work great. Those are awesome if you stick them in like the front page of your binder. You can just have little little cheat sheets of you know drill set, meter, tempo, next line drill set, you know, things like that, that really can make your process easier and have a note card per movement. That way it's there with you, easy to pull out in the same way a dot book helps people find where they're supposed to be on the field. Um, having a dot book as a drum major is definitely a commitment to some, some hardcore um, learning and it's definitely a process. So my advice to you guys is um, hopefully you're not going to let yourself be overwhelmed, but just take it um, a piece at a time. Definitely, there are lots of things you can do, conducting stylistic-wise, um, but first and foremost, it's important that you're taking care of yourself by stretching, that you are in a good place when you show up to rehearsal, that you, you know, feel good about how your pattern is by, you know, doing kind of these pattern breakdown exercises and, and just taking a minute to recalibrate on your, you know, on your own or, you know, with your team. Um, you know, it's important that you go into rehearsal feeling really comfortable about your score and knowing it. There's no worse feeling, and I've, I've been there, where you walk into a rehearsal with a score that you should probably have 100% memorized, but it's just not there yet. So definitely just taking the time to really put in the work to have your score memorized and, and to take the time to, you know, sit down with a met in your ear. Um, the MIDI files are great for getting a feel for the music, but I would not rely on the MIDI file, you know, and your ability to conduct along to it. Um, I would not equate that to knowing the music and knowing the score. Those are two separate things for separate purposes. The MIDI is definitely more helpful if you're just trying to incorporate maybe more stylistic things, but when you're learning the show, I would simply turn on your metronome. Um, if it's programmed, that's even better to get yourself through a movement. I would just turn on the met and conduct a rep like 
someone in the horn line would march a rep visually, if that makes sense. So you're just, you're just time and you're just meter going through it, you know, making sure that you know. And if you end when the met ends or if you, you know, change tempos when it's supposed to, then you know that you're on your way to having your show memorized. Um, and like, again, we said some other things that really help are, you know, recording yourself conducting with a Met, whether it's simple breakdown exercises or if it's, um, you know, just committing tempos to memory. Um, a lot of it is muscle memory, like the color guard has to go through. It's, it's being able to kind of me just sitting here, if I were to tap my, my show tempos on here, you know, it's, that's a skill that, um, it takes time to learn, but that's, that's a really, really, um, good sign that you're getting very comfortable with your show and that you'll be able to excel, um, in rehearsal. Uh, like we mentioned, there's, um, definitely multiple ways to memorize your score. The handwritten cheat sheets are great, typed up or even better. Cheat sheets are to go along with your score, not to not to be used on their own. Um, definitely take advantage of a whiteboard and mirrors in a band room if you if you've got access to those things. If not, just repetition. That that's what I mean. That's what band is about, and repetition definitely applies to drum majors and learning tempos and learning you know new music. Um, and then just some tools for rehearsal that are really great, your music binder, your cheat sheets, um, either a big index card or if you feel comfortable enough to try to keep up with all of this stuff, definitely get your own little dot book and make notes as you go. So the most important thing I think out of all of this is just making time for yourself, making sure that you feel good about where you're at with rehearsal and just setting yourself up to have a good rehearsal and to rehearse your band well. Um, that includes stretching before and after, that includes, you know, just at the end of the day, you know, doing your job, but just taking a minute to, you know, maybe walk back by yourself to the band room and decompress. Um, and then one of the most valuable resources you have is, is your drum major team and your tech or your band director. Um, and just getting honest feedback from those guys. So I hope you guys found this video useful. These are just some very baseline, simple ways to just rehearse well and to really just get good at practicing with intention. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and we will see you soon. Thanks.